everyone. Today we're going to talk about the difference between a sequence and a series and how to use proper notation. So as we've seen throughout the year, a sequence is a set of numbers that have some sort of pattern. And when you add terms in that sequence, the result is called a series. So we notate that by using what we call summation notation or sigma notation. Now a sigma is a capital S in the Greek letters. And it looks like this to the best of my ability. And when you see the sigma, you are going to find a series. So you're going to take some numbers in a sequence and add them all together. So when you see the sigma, you're taking a sum. Now the sigma, we're going to put some things around it. They're going to tell us very specific things. So we first have the index. Now the index tells us the lower limit or the starting term number. So you could start at the first term, you could start at the second term, so on and so forth. So whatever number is here tells us what term to start with. It is the lower limit, the lowest n value. So if I start at a specific number, then I need to stop at a specific number. If the series is finite, of course, we could have infinite series, which we will talk about later in the chapter. So what goes up here at the top is the upper limit or the greatest value for n. So um, that could pretty much be anything. Keep in mind that the n values will always be positive integers, right? Because they're telling you the numbers to start at and the numbers to stop at, or the term numbers in the sequence to start at and the term numbers in the sequence to stop at. So this upper limit could be any positive whole number. It could also be infinity. Now, next to the sigma, we need to state what the pattern of numbers are. So we have some pattern a sub n. You should remember that notation from doing sequences before. And what kind of rule is here is an explicit rule. It could be arithmetic, it could be geometric, it could be something else, but we always have to define where the numbers are coming from or what the sequence really is. So there's the proper notation. So now let's take a look at some examples. So here's an example of a summation that we're going to have to do. Now, if I look here, this is telling me that the lower limit is 1. That means that you want the starting term to be 1. You want to start at a sub 1. And this 7 tells you where to stop. So you want to start at a sub 1 and stop at a sub 7. So let's figure out what all those terms are. So this summation is telling me to add a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 all the way to a sub 7. Okay. So let's figure out what all of those terms are. So a sub 1 means that n is 1. So this is going to be 2 times 1, which is going to give me 2. When n is 2, I get 4. When n is 3, I get 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. So what I've done is I've generated the beginning part of this sequence and I'm going to add them all together because that's the definition of evaluating a series and I'm going to get 56. Okay, so if I were to evaluate this, if I were to evaluate this notation here, this whole thing equals 56. OK, 
Okay, let's try another one. Okay, let's take a look at this one. So this one's saying that it wants me to start at the third term and stop at the ninth term. Okay, so now how many... So what I want to do is I want to add the numbers from a sub 3 to a sub 9. Okay, so I'm going to start with a sub 3. Now, if I want a sub 3, I'm just going to replace n with 3. So I get 3 times 3 minus 2, that gives me 7, plus 3 times 4 minus 2, which gives me 10, 13, 16. Now, you should be noticing that these are all going up by 3 because my rule here is linear. Okay? So now if I add all of those together, make sure those are different. When I add all of those together, I get 112. Okay, so the summation here from n equals 3 to 9 of 3n minus 2, that equals 112. Okay, let's take a look at one that's not arithmetic. All right, so. We're going to start again with a sub 1. We're going to stop at a sub 10. So a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. What I'm going to do, I don't really feel like writing all this out. I'm just going to put little dots in here and then stop at a sub 10. So this is kind of a way of notating that you can make an assumption, the fact that I'm going to go from a sub 1 to a sub 10 consecutively. Okay, so that dot, dot, dot is what that really means in there. So now, if I substitute n as 1, I get n squared, oops, I get 1 squared plus 1, which gives me 2. Then I get 2 squared plus 2, which gives me 6. Then I'll get 3 squared plus 3, gives me 12. 4 squared plus 4 gives me 20. 5 squared plus 5 gives me 30. 6 squared plus 6 gives me 42. 7 squared plus 7. 8 squared plus 8. 9 squared plus 9. 10 squared plus 10. Okay, so I'm going to take all of these and add them together. Okay, so my summation here. Equals 351. Okay, so let's have you try one on your own. Evaluate this, pause the video, and then when you're ready, press play and you can check the answer. Did you get it?